Hey guys, and welcome back. Today we have another game of CEDH for you, and a question to go along with it. If you haven't read the title, this game potentially has kingmaking. For those that don't know, kingmaking is playing with the intent of making another player, other than yourself, win. And while you'll have to wait to the end to see what happened, it definitely brought up a few questions regarding it. But, now on to the announcements. First up, I want to give a big shout out to Dusty Cupboards, who won this week's Twitter question. Viewers of the channel should recognize him, as he's been one of the winners before. And for those that are new, he runs an interesting MTG YouTube channel called And Magic Card, where he does deep dives on specific MTG cards in the weirdest way possible. And you should check him out. But it's time for that sweet, sweet intro. All right, block there, kill that. Oh, that is trample. Guess I'm just dead on board. So who's playing today? Well, first off, we have Porfs who is still on that Najila game plan. This is a five color Thassa's consultation list that backdoors into an infinite creatures and combats combo with Najila, who even if left alone can amass a horde of warriors to take their opponents out. Second, we have MTG Loots piloting Kodama Sakashima. This is a sweet value ETB Simic list, whose goal is to use Kodama to cheat mana and gain insane value. It also runs a few different combos utilizing Sakashima's ability to copy Kodama for infinite Kodama triggers. In the third spot, we have Hidden, who's playing one of his favorites, Riel. This is an Is It Discard Matters deck that uses Riel's ability to net positive on cards such as Faithless Looting to dig deep and assemble an Underworld Breach combo. But if this deck looks interesting, we did a deck deck video on it, and I will link it in the corner and the description. And bringing up the rear, we have Jimmy, piloting a new commander to the channel. Tassiger is a Grixis value list that aims to fill the graveyard while using Tassiger's ability to recur to outvalue his opponents. He is also able to slot in Thassa's Consultation as a faster way to win. But without further ado, let's get on to the gameplay. Orf starts off the game with a Windswept Heath, which he cracks for a Tropical Island. Shortcutting, he casts an Elvish Mystic. Lutz plays a Waterlogue Grove and takes one to cast a Carpet of Flowers. He goes to his second main to add a green to cast the Finorn Elves, and hands the turn to Hidden. Hidden has a quick turn by only playing a command tower and passing. Jimmy also has a command tower, but he follows it up with a Mystic Remora. Orf continues playing fetches, this one being a Bloodstained Mire, which he promptly sacrifices to find a Volcanic Island. Before searching, he casts his Commander Najila. Fearing Najila, Jimmy casts a Force of Will, losing a life and exiling a Spellseeker from his hand to counter the commander. Lutz untaps and activates the carpet for 2 green. He uses one of it to cast an Arbor Elf. He starts feeding the fish by casting a Simic Signet. He lets Jimmy draw, and then plays a Sun Scorched Desert, paying poor for 1. He ends his turn with a Cultivate, grabbing a forest onto the battlefield and an island to hand, while Hidden cycles a Lonely Sandbar at his end step. Hidden plays an island as land, but decides to keep mana up. Jimmy on his upkeep pays for the fish, and then casts a Mox Diamond. He pitches a Breeding Pool, and then plays and cracks a Verdant Catacombs to find an underground sea, but has nothing else. Orf doesn't have anything to cast on his turn, but plays a tapped Overgrown Tomb and passes. Loot starts by activating his carpet for 2 green, and casts his commander Kodama. Jimmy responds with an Unsubstantiate to slow Loot's down. Man, Jimmy, come on, bro. Lutz then plays a forest as land and finishes his turn with a Ramanop Excavator. Hidden unfortunately doesn't have a land and needs to start casting spells. He first casts a Gilded Drake to take Lutz's Excavator, which lets him play at the discarded Lonely Sandbar before passing the turn to Jimmy. Jimmy has a quick turn. He pays for the fish and draws, but nothing else. Orf plays a City of Brass and then casts a Soul Ring. He doesn't have anything in hand and decides to just pay for the fish. Lutz activates the carpet for two and then recasts Kodama. This time it resolves and he follows it up with a Kodama's Reach. He lets Jimmy draw off the fish before finding an island for the field and one for the hand. This triggers Kodama, which lets him put the other island into play as well. He then plays an island as land and passes. Hidden finally finds a land and plays a mountain. Looking for better cards, Hidden casts a Seasoned Pyromancer, discarding two, drawing two, and making two elementals. He finally feeds the fish as he casts a Preordain, letting Jimmy draw. He scries one to the bottom and draws the other. 
Jimmy finally lets the fish go and then plays a cephalid coliseum as land. He casts a sensei's divining top and hands the turn to Porphs. Porph cracks a flooded strand to find an underground sea and casts a chrome mock. He imprints a reconnaissance and then demonic tutors to find a card before passing to Lutz. Lutz starts by casting a green sun zenith where x equals 2 to find a kinnon. This triggers Kodama and he puts an alchemist refuge into play. Lutz moves to combat and Kodama and the drake head at Porth. who chumps with his elf and takes 3. On his second main, Lutz activates his carpet for 3 and then activates kinnon to find a wood elf. Lutz declines the Kodama trigger but the elf's ETB finds a tropical island. Hidden plays on an island as land and casts Riel. It resolves and he finishes his turn with a Felwar Stone, but at his end step, Jimmy tops. Jimmy plays a forest as land and then finishes his turn by casting a Dark Confidant. At his end step, Orf casts an Ad Nauseam, to which Lutz responds by activating Kinnon. The Kinnon finds a Consecrated Sphinx, and with the Ad Nauseam still on the stack, Hidden counters it with a Fierce Guardianship. On Porf's upkeep, Jimmy flashes in a Hole Breacher, and unfortunately Porf was called away and couldn't continue playing, but revealed that he didn't have anything that would affect the board, and the turn goes to Lutz. Lutz heads straight to combat and swings Kodama, the Drake, and the Sphinx at Jimmy, and then heads to his second main as he activates the Carpet for 2 mana and activates Kinnon again to find a Quirion Ranger. He declines the Kodama trigger and activates Kinnon again, but fails to find. He then activates the ranger to bounce a forest to untap the Arbor Elf, before replaying the land. Hidden starts off his turn with a gamble. He finds a card and then randomly discards a defecting swat. This triggers Riel, but with the Hull Breacher, Jimmy gets a treasure instead. Next, Hidden casts a snap to bounce the Hull Breacher. Using the treasure, Jimmy responds by topping and drawing off the top before casting a Force of Vigor, pitching a Bloom Tender. He destroys Lutz's Signet and Hidden's Felwar Stone, with Hidden tapping the stone for mana. The snap resolves and untaps his land. Hidden goes greedy and casts a Wheel of Fortune, knowing it might just end the game on Lutz's turn. The wheel resolves and everyone draws 7, with Lutz drawing an additional 28 cards. Yikes. Hidden's new hand unfortunately isn't much better, but he starts by playing an Arid Mesa from his graveyard, thanks to the Excavator. He finds a volcanic island and follows it up with a lotus petal and then a cursed totem. This prompts a response from Lutz as he taps mana and activates the alchemist refuge to cast cards at instant speed. He exiles an elvish spirit guide for a green and then flashes in a jeweled lotus, triggering Kodama to put a mana crypt into play. He then cracks the lotus for blue and casts Sakashima as a copy of Kodama. For those that don't know, this essentially gets them infinite cascading triggers for Kodama, as when one puts something into play, the other triggers, and this lets Lutz drop every permanent in his hand of CMC 6 or less. The first card put in is a Deadeye Navigator, which soul bounds to Sakashima. The so Kodama's triggers keep happening as he goes down the cost for each permanent. Surprisingly enough, the important cards that enter are actually the lands at the very end, these being Gaia's Cradle, Guildless Commons, and Field of the Dead for infinite zombies. And with the last Kodama trigger on the stack, Luz casts a Sylvan Scrying to find an Arch of Araska. While he's searching, he actually realizes he forgot to add Thassa's Oracle. He then taps the Cradle for mana and casts a Genesis Wave to put the rest of his permanents onto the field. Long story short, this all happens, but Luz doesn't have a way of stopping the totem, and it passes to Jimmy's turn. Jimmy on his upkeep casts a Worldly Tutor to find and draw a Thassa's Oracle. He plays an Exotic Orchard as land and then casts the Oracle. While holding priority, he casts the Demonic Consultation, to which Luz responds with a Brainstorm. After drawing, he tries and counterspell it with a Force of Negation, but Jimmy responds with a counterspell of his own. Not having an answer, priority passes to Hidden, and he asks a very interesting question. Yeah, I don't think I can stop that. I messed up. All right, so I guess my question is, so I have a counterspell, but is that king making? So that's, that's the thing. So yeah. I have a fluster storm. I have a mental misstep. That doesn't do anything. Storm still happens, though. Damn it. That's the thing. But that, I, I know I'm going to die to... I to say leave. you call this, is this king making? Yeah. And just ask the community what they think. <laughs> <laughs> 
and end, end it here. So now we have a predicament and a question for the viewer. Who won the game? Hidden has a Flusterstorm, which would have stopped Jimmy from winning, but guarantees Lutz's victory. Or is it Jimmy who gets the win, as Lutz didn't have a way of stopping him? Let me know in the comments down below. Game review. So, yeah, sorry we did not have a clear victor in this game, but I thought it was still an interesting to see it play out. It probably wasn't the smartest play on Hidden's part to wheel with the Sphinx out, but his hand was not good, and he had no way of dealing with it, and overall wasn't in a good position for most of the game. Man, it seems like every game I play with Riel, a whole breacher makes an appearance, and boy, does it suck. As for Porse, unfortunately he could not continue, but after Najila died and his ad nauseum was countered, he really didn't have money else to do, and after continually drawing more and more lands, he was just out of the game even before he had to leave. As for Jimmy, I think he did the best he could, but I don't know if he should have killed the fish earlier to build his board out more instead of just drawing cards. As for Lutz, I don't think the Genesis wave was the correct play. Instead, he needed to keep up all the counter magic he could, and the G-Wave essentially dumped every instant and sorcery into his graveyard, preventing him from stopping the totem or the oracle that followed it. He had the win the very next turn, but was overconfident. It was definitely interesting to see Kodama being played in a competitive setting though. I definitely felt some nostalgia when I saw the Cultivates and Kodama reaches coming out, but let us know who actually won in the comments down below. Hey guys, thanks for making it to the end of the video. I just wanted to let you know that we have a TCG affiliate link, and if you ever see a card you want to try or are inspired to brew something new, use our link when purchasing and we'll receive a small portion of the sale. This is a great way to support the channel, and if you enjoyed the gameplay, please leave a like and subscribe as it really helps us keep making videos. And remember, never give up, even if you're dead on board. I'll see you guys later.